I'll put my, like, hands under the table while we're talking. Well, put your hands where I can see them, Daryl. No playing pocket pool. Okay, sorry. Pocket pool. <laughs> pocket pool. <laughs> More than two shakes is uh, something. I don't know. Fuck it, Al. Okay, all right, hang on. Are we recording? We're recording. Oh, nice. Hang on, hang on. I'm trying. Excellent. I'm, I'm professional. Welcome to WTF Stories and Advice. I'm Caroline Cranshaw, hypnotherapist and terrible advice giver. And today... Well, not that terrible, obviously, but you know. And today, <laughs> I digress, we have the amazing, legendary Daryl Gove. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I was giving my best Ross from Hello, Ross, and from RuPaul's Drag Race impression. Oh, I don't know. I don't know Hello, Ross. He's hilarious, hilarious American comic. I first used to watch him as a guest, a regular guest on Chelsea Lately, Chelsea Handler's old oh, show. Oh, I love Chelsea. So funny. And this guy used to just have the most amazing one-liners. So he's now a co-host on RuPaul's Drag Race, if you follow that. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. He's fabulous. He's so good. <sighs> so we're still in lockdown. do 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 Oh, no, you can just add side effects later. I don't need to do them, do I? No, but hey, I don't know why I wouldn't really add side effects. So for anyone who's not New Zealand, I'm just going to give you updates. Blow by blow. You probably don't want to hear fucking yeah, anything like, about Yeah, because they really COVID. want to know. <laughs> 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 okay, maybe not. But no, they've made it so. So we're in like total lockdown. Can't go to stores or anything all you can do is like buy some food from takeaways very social distance and they're not letting us out until we are at 90 percent vaccination which no other country in the world has achieved so i just thought i think you all know that <laughs> and when we do get out there's vaccine passports everywhere and uh, you're beaten with a big stick if you look sideways at somebody pretty sure yeah. As the former Prime Minister of New Zealand put it, Jacinda's gone for the North Korean option. <laughs> yeah. And hey, I don't know how I'd do it, but I just thought you'd let you people know that we're stuck, we're trapped. Help. Help us. Help. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel too trapped here. It's. I think we're blessed that we're in spring going into summer. So, yeah. you know, we, we're allowed to meet outdoors now and just get out walk about in New Zealand for you guys that aren't here you're never more than a few meters from the beach or from the, the countryside like it's such a skinny country that mm. the beach and the forest is always kind of close so yeah. yeah it's lucky we're able to get into nature yes so anyways, anyways. <laughs> I'm just anyways. feeling sorry for myself oh don't feel um, sorry I know, I know. It's just hard. I like to like see people and it's it's bizarre. Anyways, we have a listener's letter. Ooh. And yes, we have a listener's letter and I thought we would just talk about that rather than listening to me bitch about COVID, which is probably why you listen to this is so you don't have to fucking think about that. So I apologize. But hey. This is my podcast, so I can run my fucking mouth however I want. (laughs) 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 And if you don't like it, oh, fucking turn it off. Anyway, (laughs) that's how I feel about that. (laughs) (laughs) I did a podcast with another amazing podcaster, Belle Crawford, who has a podcast called The Self Love Club. And it was all about... Onanism. People pleasing, not masturbation. (laughs) Yeah did it all about masturbation and we talked no, about people pleasing because she was really struggling because she kept getting people like sending her negative comments saying that, that she needed to shut up and not talk to not many like just a few but a few comments telling her to shut up and that she shouldn't talk on her own fucking podcast and I was just like are you kidding me <laughs> like, what <laughs> the fuck you can talk on your own podcast thank you very much so okay again I am distracted but i have add so hopefully her um listener that wrote that in isn't listening to this now (laughs) (laughs) well if she is 
I don't know. What I want to say is, just tell me where your podcast is, and I'll listen to that, and I'll give you a review of yours. And if you don't have one, well, then, I don't know. Oh, that sounds a bit snarky, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just hard when you put yourself out there, and you're vulnerable, and you are creating content, and then people tell you (laughs) it sucks, (laughs) or (laughs) tell you how to do it better. Yeah, but you know what I think is... um Probably, if people hate it, they're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't go around judging people for being wrong. No, I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I know for myself, I've gotten some negative comments that have actually been helpful. Like people have made comments like, like at the beginning, I would do all these like weird, I actually would do these weird sound effects and stuff, like with the stories and I would do, and this one's like, you fucking... I don't, you need to stop that. That's just distracting and weird. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, maybe I need to stop that. So actually, criticism can be helpful. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah but feedback. I think if you really care, rather than posting it in someone's reviews, why don't you send them an email and say, hey, you suck. Are you okay? You're like banging around. Oh, what are you doing? I'm sending you an email. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With some feedback on this episode. Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, yeah. You just give me some feedback and we'll see how that goes. Okay, okay, okay. We've been rambling, or I, so let me take responsibility for my own bullshit. Been rambling too much. So we're going to read this letter because it's fucking Thank long. You. It's a fucking long letter, but it's good. Read me letters. I haven't, I haven't uh, read enough letters. Nobody gets, gives letters anymore. And I gave you shit last time for saying letter. <laughs> and then I've said it. So I need to take a fucking bit of my own advice and shut the fuck up. Hey, Caroline, I've been a big fan of the podcast for over a year, and I'm currently working my way back through the bottom to top. Really enjoyed your recordings with Jimmy Hunt. Absolutely adored Daryl. And I'm wondering how Louisa is going over the ditch. And just so you know, Louisa is going amazing, and she's super busy, and we keep trying to make a time to do a podcast, but it just hasn't happened. But she is doing incredible and she's a producer for a super successful morning show in Sydney, and she's doing amazing. But hopefully... We'll get her back on because I love Louisa. So just so you all know. All right. I'm writing in to get your advice on a friendship that has, well, ended. I've decided to rename everyone in the story to keep it confidential. And I know my name is in the email. So if you do decide to read this out in the podcast, you can use any alias you like for me. It's probably going to be a very lengthy read. So grab a glass of vino and buckle up, babes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, And you guys that are listening, yeah, get some wine unless it's not appropriate. pretend that we're your friends and we're in your house because yeah we we miss being in people's houses and that we're with you and we're going to just have a chat and i think that's what this podcast is right it's like people feel like they're just listening in on a chat (laughs) so that's basically what we're doing okay i wanted to try and write in this way that doesn't highlight me as the goody and quote unquote emma i'm thinking that must be a, a pseudonym the baddie, because I want your honest opinion about the whole situation. It's been quite hard to describe it all as you don't know me or Emma and anyone else in the story, but I'll do my best. Yeah, good luck, because you definitely will be biased. <laughs> yeah, I will be totally biased. But we appreciate well, you knowing that. <laughs> yeah, and I do always try to give my honest opinion with friends or whoever, and they don't always like it. <laughs> like I had a friend text me last night <laughs> to tell me that her son had, oh, why am I going off on this? Yeah, had crashed. Well, just how I'm honest. I haven't heard back from her from my reply. Her son had crashed his like girlfriend's uninsured car into another car, and she was saying how, guess who's got to pay $8,000 to make it all go away? Oh, no. And I said, I hope it's not you, <laughs> because... People don't learn if you clean up their mistakes, and I think he should be Mm. consequences. For me, the best thing my mother ever did was make me have consequences. Anyway, she hasn't gotten back to me, so I don't think she liked what I had to say. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm honest. Okay. So, a little, a lot of background. I am a 27-year-old woman now, and I first met Emma, 29 female, several years ago when I was around 19, and she began working in the same place as me. We're from a small town that has a population of about 40,000 people, give or take. A small town? That sounds big to me, but however. <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> well, tiny-ish. I guess it all depends where you're from. 
We worked together for about six months before the business closed, and we never really hung out much, maybe a coffee or lunch date over the years in between until our friendship kicked off. I'm quite an outgoing person, and I don't find it particularly difficult to make friends, and I'm generally an open book. What you see is what you get. But I am quite a sensitive person and usually very susceptible to other people's emotions or energy. Because of this, I hate confrontation and avoid it. But I've learned to stick up for myself and speak my truth, so I will do so if necessary. I had separated from my fiancé, who I'd been with since I was 18, so around six years, in mid-2018, and Emma happened to be the legal executive doing the background work on our separation papers, house, money, etc. Our friendship really began early 2019. Emma was due to get married, and she came to my house about a month before her wedding, asking how I had called it off with my ex-fiancé. I gave her lots of advice, Ooh. and though she decided to get married anyway. We started hanging out a lot more, and I introduced her to all my friends, and she fit in reasonably well with some of them. Obviously not all. <laughs> <laughs> but so there's obviously some friends who are like, I never liked that bitch. <laughs> you can tell. I'm reading between the lines here, but that's the impression I get. What do you think? Uh, it, it's too it's too soon to tell. Too soon okay. to tell. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, you don't I'll, jump. I'll reserve judgment. <laughs> yeah, I like to jump to conclusions immediately, personally. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> a few of my really close girlfriends. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Reading between the lines or just reading the next line in your head? <laughs> <laughs> I I did read this, but it was like we got it, I don't know, a week ago, a week or two ago, and I had skimmed it and went, thought that's a really good topic, so I'm going to do it. So I hadn't read it. I haven't read this super in depth, but <laughs> yeah, obviously my subconscious mind did now. All right. So a few of my really close girlfriends never really liked her much, but respected my friendship with her and would happily spend time with her when she was with me. Approximately three months after Emma was married, she was indicating to me that she was thinking about taking a break from the marriage to clear her head and see where they sit. Long story short, they separated and since divorced. Q having a really fun couple of years, lots of hanging out, lots of fantastic memories, and we had a pretty great friendship. We talk about everything, as we do with our gal pals, especially men. Men we're into, men we weren't, men we could be interested in, and men we thought might be into us. I had an on and off relationship with one man the whole time. Emma developed a nickname for me, Skank Pants, because I couldn't stay away from him. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Skank Pants. Skank implies more than one man, so going back and forth to the same man, uh, Skank's not appropriate. But however, yeah. between friends, we can call each other names. Well, I don't call my friends Skank Pants, but anyways. No, true. Because I couldn't stay away from him, even though he had commitment issues. I couldn't help that our chemistry was fire. Even now, the chemistry is wild, but I've done a lot of inner growth since then and know my worth now. So even it, now, so you're you still just sleeping with him. Exchange the word chemistry for commitment issues. Because as soon as somebody has commitment issues and then they want you, don't want you, they're hot and cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. That's, that creates the chemistry. That's why you want him. 100% <laughs> Daryl you just fucking nailed it so true how to make someone obsessed this is what I always say to people because they're like I don't know it's been so hot and cold blah blah blah. I'm like that's how you make someone obsessed with you like they've done studies on it mm -hmm. so hello yeah you're exactly right so anywho we'll put that to the side and write back once <laughs> you've left him and met somebody decent but carry on <laughs> anywho I, I relocated from my hometown to a new town mid-2020 this in part was for work and in part to get away from hot flame above. It was toxic in an avoidance way. Wise. And, yeah. Emma would come and visit every few weeks or so, which was really nice, as it does take time to build up friendships in a new town. So I was grateful to hang out with someone I knew really well. I was going home pretty frequently, too, and we caught up all the time. Nice. After the move, I noticed when I'd spend time with Emma in a group situation, she began to make little comments about me that were derogatory or belittling, particularly when men are around. So my first, my suspicion with that, my first suspicion is she's shagging this old hot flame. Ooh. The, the friend is. That's, I don't know. Let, let's, let's read on. But that, that's what, it makes me suspicious that she's suddenly changed, that she's suddenly making these comments. That's not on. Yeah. That, to me, whenever, oh, I get fucking furious when I see women do this, and I will have goes at them, like, because I'll see other women do this. They don't tend to do it to me, not more than once, <laughs> because I <laughs> just destroy their souls. But whenever I see someone doing this, first of all, I think, you're insecure, you're a fucking bitch, and, and I just have goes at them, because I really hate it. 
Mm-hmm. It's probably not the best way to deal with it, but I'm like, what the fuck, bitch? Well, no, I, I, I think you're right, though. If, if somebody insults you or has digs at you, especially in front of other people, I think it's quite appropriate to shut it down straight away. Like oh. shut it down the first time so it doesn't become a habit. Yeah, just teach them what it's, teach them how you want to be treated. Teach them what's okay for you. Exactly. You teach people how to treat you. So particularly when men around, but when it was just the two of us, she was amazing. We got on like a house on fire. The following are just a few examples of the comments I mean. Emma, myself, and a couple other friends, male and female, decided to get brunch one day when I was visiting home. The topic turned to sex. Sex is wonderful. Sex is fun. We begin talking about prude behavior. I'm joking around, thinking, yeah. saying, I think I'm a bit of a prude as I get a bit flustered around any man I'm attracted to, blushing, and I'm always very shy when it comes to sex, despite being very confident and comfortable with my body. Well, good on you, girl, for being confident and comfortable with your body. That is, like, amazing. And I think that just takes time as well. Took me till like my mid thirties to feel really confident with sex. I would say, maybe a bit young. Well, maybe not. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> depends on the person you're with. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that it's you know you can have your confidence knocked or you can have it boosted. Yeah, and so being confident in yourself with your body is, is the number one thing you got to do. Hundred percent. So if you got that girl, you're doing good. Emma follows this with, "If you're a prude, then I must be a whore." You can't hear the tone when she spoke it, but it was definitely offensive. So naturally, well, I repeated it in an offensive tone. So offensive to who, though? I don't get that. If she's calling, if you're a prude, I must be a whore. That's mm, I I think that's pretty. That's a bit of a nasty thing to say, don't you think? If you're a prude, then I must be a whore. But she's insulting herself, so she's saying something nasty to herself. Or is she implying that her friend isn't a prude? It's just a bit weird is what it is. It doesn't make too much sense. It's just, it's it's kind of cutting. I don't, actually, yeah, it shows her own insecurity, really, doesn't it? Yeah. So I was definitely offended by her comment and indicated this. My other friends were also horrified at the comment, saying things like, whoa, that was uncalled for, and it's not funny. She laughed it off and said, oh, at least you pulled me up on it. Mm. So that's one situation. Here's a new one. We gathered at my good friend's house for margaritas and nachos. Nice, yum. There are about 15 people there, and I'm talking about Tinder matches. The boys are giving me shit, a bit of banter, all good fun. Emma proceeds to make comments about this, literally saying, damn, you're a slut. Ooh. Fuck. I sat there shocked she would say something like that. She and I had literally been talking about my Tinder matches earlier in the day, and she knew that, one, I had never slept with any of them. Two, I'm not a fan of casual sex. It doesn't do it for me, so rare occasion if I do it. And Emma knows this. One of my best guy friends took one look at her after this comment and said, what are you on about? She's not a slut, and everyone here knows it. Emma brushed it off as a joke. It gets awkward. I'm pissed off, and the subject moves on quickly. I make a point of not really engaging with her for the rest of the night, and the rest of the evening continues on without a hitch. So that's obviously the friend projecting. When I was in my single stage and I used to go out dancing with my friend all the time, I would constantly just stay with my friend. I think Hmm. once ever I went home with someone and and didn't go home with her to her house. And then I remember at a party one time, she was like, oh, Daryl, in front of her friends saying how I used to go out and go home with a different guy every weekend. And I'm like, it's not that I couldn't do that. And it's not that there haven't been times in my life where I've been a bit more... I don't know, slutty, but I didn't. And it wasn't true. But what was true is that she would hook up with different guys and each mm. she, she would always have a different guy. And I didn't correct her in front of her friends because I didn't want to, you know, shame her. But it's that, it's a similar situation. I, I was shocked. I was like, what's that about? And, you know, it's, it's not true. But it's a thing that happens. People project their behavior onto you because they can't accept it about themselves. So yeah. she's obviously thinking she's a slut herself the friend otherwise why call somebody else a slut you spot it you got it that's what i say to people <laughs> it's like mm. whatever you it's, got it I, that's what i say it's like you're beautiful caroline <laughs> i'm clever and smart right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right so fast forward a few months emma and i decide to go for a little holiday her good friend picks us up from the airport and we're making our way to a cafe. During the drive, we're having a laugh about the Father's Day is on Sunday YouTube clip. For the love of God, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's hilarious and painful. I don't know that one. I'll have to check it out. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. There's a a radio competition 
And I don't know what the prize is, but anyway, this woman phones up. Uh, it's like Jeopardy. So we don't yeah. have Jeopardy in New Zealand, but I believe with Jeopardy, you you start with like the answer and you, the person has to say the question. Yeah. So if it's Sunday, the question would be, what day is Father's Day? And so they're trying to get her to get it, but she just keeps saying Sunday. Father's Day is on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but what's the question? How would I ask it? And, and it's, this goes on over and over and over. They're feeding her. They want her to win the prize. They want to give her the money, but she just doesn't get it. And it like, like you will be banging your head against the table because <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Definitely check it out. Okay, so jokingly, I say, I feel like I lose brain cells every time I listen to it. And Emma replies, again, with her fucking tone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like you can afford to lose any more. Any more what? Brain cells. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's mean. That's like saying, well, you're fucking stupid. Yeah. What? Why all the dicks? I know. Oh. So... To this I say, wow, that's a bit harsh, don't you think? And she responds with, hmm, is it? I had already been questioning our entire friendship because of this shitty little thing she's been saying, and here I realize I've made a huge mistake coming on this trip with her, even though we had just arrived. There's other instances during the holidays, many more in general that I haven't mentioned, but for now you get the picture. Yeah, it sounds like she had something to say as well. At, at that stage, I would have been confronting her. Like, what, what's that about? Yeah. Is it? Is it? You must mean something by that. What, <laughs> what is it oh, to say? I would be ropeable if someone told me it's not like you can afford it to lose any more brain cells. I would just be like, fuck you, bitch. I would just, it's probably not the best way to handle it. I will probably laugh because probably they're right. <laughs> that probably that... kills off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking hey, <over> the years. <laughs> I have lost a lot of brain cells. In my lifetime. But the thing is, what they know now is they regenerate, right? And Yay. fuck you. What if someone really was a bit thick? Like that's really just, it's not a nice thing to say. And it's certainly not something you say to your friends. Well, she, she's certainly betraying you. She's betraying the trust that you have in her already. Mm. Well, that's the thing is you're supposed to be able to trust your friends and for your friends to have your back. Because otherwise, why fucking have friends? You know what I mean? Like, that's not a friend. So, okay. It takes a lot for me to get upset about something enough to actually bring it up to somebody. But after six plus months of these nasty comments, I decided enough is enough. This would have been around May 2021. I went to see her, but before I could say anything, she said she hadn't been in a very good headspace lately. I replied saying I'd kind of noticed <laughs> because she had been saying some quite mean things to me in front of other people. Her reply, well, maybe you're just too sensitive. Which, wow. A friend said to me, you're making mean comments to me in front of other people. I'd be like, I'm really sorry if I've been doing that. And I would never want to hurt. I would take responsibility. When, when I brought it up with a friend of mine, she was devastated. She was mm. devastated. And I found out that that's how she's used to being treated by her friends. And so it was just natural for her. And she hadn't thought any different. She didn't mean anything mean by it. Yeah, people, if they care about you, are going to want to know that they've hurt your feelings. And then they're going to stop. If somebody yeah. calls you, oh, you're too sensitive, that's, that's dickhead. That's mega yeah. dickhead behavior. No, it's not acknowledging how people feel. And it's not cool. To this, I said, if you know I'm sensitive, then why do you still say them? Good. Mm, good. Perfect response. She went quiet for quite a while, at probably a good 10 minutes, and I haven't experienced the comment since. <laughs> well done. <laughs> be, I know. Hey. To be fair, there's only about a month between this and the below part of the story. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You just call people on their shit, right? Can I add something in here as well? Now, yeah. she, she may have known that you were coming around to have that talk, and that's why she opened with, I'm not in a good space. Mm. That could be one option. But the other thing is, the other option is this. She might not have known, and she might have been in a bad space. And I always find that picking somebody, even an adversary's weak moment, to challenge them isn't the best idea. I, I, mm. I perhaps would have frame that differently that's just a thought and it's the reason I'm, i think it went well with you and well done but for the listeners what I'll, what i know is that i know other people who have confronted people in weak moments and it has blown up and just gone extremely badly so yeah my one, one person confronting somebody on their birthday for example 
and mm. she's like this is my fucking birthday and but this is important we need to talk about this but this is my fucking birthday so even if someone's a dickhead leave them alone if they're feeling shit or on their birthday or whatever on their wedding day and and really pick a time where it's um even ground mutual territory yeah to, to have these conversations because if they're genuinely your friend you're not trying to hurt them you're trying to resolve right you're trying to yeah. heal the relationship but that's just a, a side note the side boob carry on a side boob (laughs) but I think you're right you do want to pick those moments and you don't want to do it when someone's already down but what I find I've certainly had friends like this and when I've tried to have a talk to them about it there always be something Mm -hmm. because it's like they intuitively know I'm ready to call them on their shit and it'd be like "Eh, I have a migraine or I have this or yeah they would just deflect so I think it is it's a thing that people will do because they can pick up on it really I feel like that might have been the case in this instance. Yeah, I think so too. Cool. Let's continue. On to the actual story. It's my birthday, June 2021, and I'm having a little get-together with friends. Emma asks if she can bring a few people she met at CrossFit, and I say, sure thing. The party starts, it's a jolly good time, and we're all drinking and having fun. Emma arrives with her friends, and I instantly notice one of the guys, Tim, is really cute. As the night progresses, I think he's into me. Actually, the fact that he had me pinned up against a wall and was making out with me was a really big indicator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all bugger off to town. I skedaddle. <laughs> so she's got good colloquialisms, doesn't she? I skedaddle home not long after because I am very drunk and go to sleep. Bob's your uncle. The next morning, Emma comes to collect her car and I ask her, why aren't you interested in Tim? He's cute. To which, with a funny look on her face, she replies, I never said that. I think this is a little strange, as during our whole friendship, she always tells me about any guy she's into, so I definitely thought it was weird she hadn't mentioned him as except as a friend, especially since she brought him along with other guys. So That could be true. When I really like someone, I don't tell my friends. Mm. When I really, really like someone, if I'm, oh, I fancy him, I'll I'll talk to my friend about it. But when I really like someone, I almost want to protect it by keeping it safe away from my friends. But carry on. So That's interesting. I'd be more like I want to tell them I like them so that they don't try to make a move on them. (laughs) Because if you don't say anything and something happens with someone else, then you can't say shit, right? I don't know. Yeah. I say, oh, okay. And I leave it at that and change the subject. The next day, he finds and adds me on Instagram and Snapchat and proceeds to ask me if I would like to go over for a spa and a wine. I'm kind of stoked and say a tentative yes. Out of respect for Emma, I want to run it past her first. I message her to let her know that he had messaged me asking me to hang out and whether or not she would mind if I did. She replies that actually she would be gutted. If you don't know what that's... Yeah, just yeah. really disappointed. Yeah. Kicked in the gut. But hold on. A first date, spa and wine, like you may as well just said, come around for sex, but carry on. <laughs> True. No. And any but, date that's at your house, even dinner, it means sex. But that doesn't mean you have to have sex with them. And they but already you had if you made up. So it wasn't like they hadn't been intimate already. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, no, I'm not, no, no judgment. I'm just pointing out, you know. <laughs> You're judging. <laughs> when my friend asked me around for a spa back in the olden days and I went around for a spa, I knew exactly what it meant and you should too. And any date that <laughs> is at someone's house, if someone cooks mm. you dinner, that means sex. That's what it means. Well, that's what they are hoping is going to happen, but that doesn't. I mean, I've certainly gone over to guys, not on a first date, but on subsequent dates and haven't slept with them. So, I don't know, it's up to you. Just because they want sex doesn't mean they're going to get it. But anyways, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good, good to know. Good to know. You Obviously, there was chemistry. So, she says she's going to be, she would be kind of gutted. I say, okay, no worries. I'll decline his offer. A short while later, I messaged again to let her know that we had kissed at my birthday just to have it out there in case she was unaware. Turns out she was unaware and she thanks me for letting her know. The weekend rolls around and she goes back to our hometown for this long weekend. And once she gets back, we catch up on Monday evening for dinner. I bring up the thing about Tim and she tells me she's less interested in him because she knows we kissed up at my birthday and proceeds to tell me about her weekend where she hooked up with a guy and went on a date with another. Neither of them, Tim. The topic of Tim doesn't come up again. So it sounds like she says she's less interested now that she knows they had hooked up. 
And whoever gets there first, I don't know. I think it's like if someone else already hooked up, you can't go, oh, actually, I like them and you can't hook up with him now. But then I'm, I'm suspicious here of, and, and again, I'm not seeking to judge, but I wonder, some, somebody doesn't usually say I'm less interested now. They might, they might say that. Did she say I'm put off? or something like that. Did you interpret it that she was less interested or did she say it? Maybe she did say it and that's it's fine. But also, clearly, he's not the only man for her. No. Well, she had hooked up with two other guys that weekend, so. Or hooked up and went on a date with another. Tim messages me the next day, again, asking to hang out. Because Emma said she wasn't as interested, I thought, actually, maybe she wouldn't mind now. Again, I run it past her, and she gets quite pissed off at me for asking, saying she's already told me that she would not be okay with it, so why am I asking again? Mm -hmm. So I tell Tim no, I can't go over, and I don't. It's important to reiterate that the only time I've spent with him was at my birthday party. It's now Thursday, that same week, and I ask Emma if she wants to have a quiet movie night Friday. All I get back is busy, sorry. I replied, are you pissed at me? This is the exact wording I got back. I already have plans tomorrow and I'm away for the weekend. I'm very stressed with work and my final assignment worth 40% of my grade is coming up. Hell shit. Sick family members trying to convince my dad and sister not to worry about me and manage chest pains, which means I'm high more often than I care to be at the moment and trying to make sure I don't give myself a stomach ulcer in the process, which doesn't help is having to tell someone who's meant to be one of my best friends multiple times to don't go for a guy. So yeah, I'm a bit gutted. I just don't have the capacity to deal with drama right now on top of everything else I'm dealing with. So I just need space to deal with the other stuff in my life. Whew. Okay. She sounds overwhelmed. She does. Yes. But she also, to me, sounds manipulative. In the yeah. circle. I mean, I, I mean, the warning bells rang as soon as I heard CrossFit, just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a whole culture, isn't it? Well, it used to be when we could like be in the same room together. To this, I reply, exact warning. Hey, chick, I'm sorry that you have a lot going on. Let me know if you want to talk about it. With regards to Tim, I don't want to keep on about this by any means. I only double check on Tuesday because you said you are no longer interested in him and he had hit me up about hanging out. So I said, no, I'm sorry you feel gutted about it. I'll give you all the space you need, babe. I hope your chest pain stops soon. Oh, so caring. Yes. I proceed to give her space and we don't talk for a month. Two months. During these months, I went from pissed off to thinking maybe I'm an asshole and in the wrong to confused and then pissed off for thinking I was in the wrong, etc. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Another month goes by. Finally, I get a message from her on Instagram replying to one of my stories I posted of a pygmy monkey. So cute. Google them. And all she says, it looks like a baby Chewbacca. I honestly didn't bother replying. After months of not speaking, that's what she wants to say. She asked me for space. I respected that. And meanwhile, she doesn't have any issues with continuing to spend time with Tim. Mm. So she's hanging out with Tim. It's truly not even about the boy for me it's that she's willing to sacrifice our friendship because of a boy that's interesting mm. so she's hanging out with tim did we have anything said about that before so the no. friend is hanging out with tim not emma yeah but that's fine because she's the friends tim was friends with her anyway that's how she came to, he came to the party i think the thing is is that a lot of times when there are these kind of friendship things people are just making what they call bids Mm -hmm. in relationships they're just testing the waters this is a big thing in relationships especially like interpersonal relationships but like in couples is if you're fighting or there's tension and someone goes oh look at the bird and if you got fucking hate birds or i'm mad at you and i'm not looking at the fucking bird you've just rejected their bid Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think what she was doing was just trying to make a bid instead of coming back and going, hey, I've been a fucking raging bitch and I'm really sorry. But she probably doesn't think she's been a bitch. She probably thinks you've been a bitch because everybody has their own filter and their own side. And of course, they're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. So, okay, where are we now? So she didn't reply. So it's been three Uh, months. It's not even about the boy. It's just she's willing to sacrifice her friendship because of a boy. I confided in a few of my closest girlfriends who also know her, and they all said it felt like she had to compete with me in social situations because I am fun and energetic and people are naturally drawn to me, and she isn't like that. 
I mentioned that Emma had always been a great friend one-on-one, mm. and they think it's because she didn't need to compete for attention, and she could just enjoy me all to herself. Interesting. So th- this is a dynamic. This Okay, how much to say? This is the dynamic between the introvert and the extrovert, because the mm. extrovert is going to attract lots of people, and yeah. the introvert's going to keep few friends. They're not going to have too many, and extrovert's mm. going to have lots. And one-on-one, it's it's great. Introvert, extrovert, have a great exchange. Now, put introverts in a room with extroverts, other extroverted friends. How does the introvert now feel? Well, they want to slink into a corner. They want to disappear. They're, mm. they're not comfortable. And it's not their fault. This is just this is how they are. And But then how do they behave? And unfortunately, sometimes they are snarky or they, mm. they can be mean or they, they can cause a scene or they're just trying to get attention. You know, there's only for so many reasons to cut someone down yeah. and yeah it's if you're not if you see someone else getting attention and you're used to being the center of someone's world yeah she was just jealous mm. she was hurting yeah one friend has a theory that she had a secret th- crush on me that did make me laugh <laughs> mm. at times i had have considered sending her a message i guess just to express how the whole situation made me feel None of them think I should message her and that she was a toxic friend and I'm better off without her. After a lot of reflection, since this has all happened, I found that whenever I'm in group situations or whenever I was in group situations with Emma, I would never have a good time. Mm. Well, that's just not cool. I think the way I categorize women as there's women with women's women, what I call women's women, and then there's men's women. And women, women love other women and we support each other and we take each other's side, right? Like, I love men too, but I'm going to try to like protect women as well. I don't know. It's like the girl code. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I, I've, I've seen it in movies and stuff, but yeah. But men's women can be great one-on-one friends. But when you get them into a group, what they do is they see other women as competition for men. Okay, I'm, I can think of some people that fit that, yeah. Yeah, so it is, they just, it's a different dynamic, and I never really trust those women, and those are the women that tend to have affairs with married men, and yeah, so that's, that's just my thought. So it's now been four and a half months, and I was told by a mutual friend yesterday that Emma said I had dropped her as a friend for no reason, and that I had hung out with Tim and sent her a picture of him and I in the spa all those months ago when she had asked me not to. Obviously, neither of these things are true. The same friend said they're shagging now. I hope it works out for them as I have no hate towards her and we all deserve love. <sighs> oh, dear. So there's one more, one more sentence and then we'll, we'll dissect okay. a bit more. So, Caroline, I would love to know what you think about this and I'm more than happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thanks for reading the novel of an email and thanks for her producing amazing content for everyone to listen to. Oh, thank you. Yay. Yay. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, I don't know if this needs to be that difficult. Mm. It's like, maybe from her point of view, you ditched her because she forgot that she asked for space. And maybe she wanted you to make bids in that time and you didn't. Mm. But either way, the friendship is over. Yeah. It's over. And it doesn't sound like either of you really wants it back that badly. And if you did... From your point of view, to me, that would look like you having to make concessions to take the blame for things that aren't your fault and Mm. to diminish yourself in order to win her approval back. And I just don't think that sounds like she's worth it. No, and she's lying basically to make the woman who's written the letter look bad to other people and make herself look like the victim, right? She's totally like making her sound like she was just this man eater that went after this man when she asked her not to and then sent her pictures of them in the spa but now they're fucking like really you're gonna fuck a guy who does that yeah and you know you've acted respectfully the whole way through mm. you know provided it is as you say it is and i've got no reason not to believe you i think you're telling the truth yeah and you've said you've you've asked her questions you've let her know you've tested the water if you're not sure and you've been really just a, a good friend you've done what a good friend should do what she's done on the other hand, is, you know, even if she liked Tim, mm-hmm. like, even if she did, if Tim liked you, maybe a really good friend would say, oh, well, he's into you, not me. You know, go for it. 
That's a good, po- really good point, right? I just, unless I had had like a full on relationship with someone, but even like I set up my ex-husband with a friend, like that's how much I don't care, you know? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, it's manipulative. It's interesting that she's now seeing the guy though, isn't it? it it's interesting and not surprising, but obviously it's not going to last. Mm. You know, it's, it's definitely not going to last, but uh, who knows? Tim might get in touch again. He might be a really nice guy and he might get in touch. And if she's not your friend, then you don't have to honor the friend code anymore. But it's, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All bets are off. Now you should go after him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I was 16 and I dated my, the first guy I dated, it was a bisexual guy from the next town. I was totally obsessed with him because like this guy liked me and he was gorgeous and he was in a band and we're dating and we'd had a few dates and stuff. And then he's like, actually, I, I fancy your friend. I fancy your, your friend Ilsa. And I'm like, oh, do you think you could set me up with her? And I'm like, oh, oh, like, okay, what, whatever. And I was a bit shocked, but also. Had you been intimate? We just kissed and stuff. But, oh, yeah, yeah no, that's no, intimate. Yeah, and no, no sexy time, but intimate enough. And and anyway, so I, I phoned Ilsa and I was like, oh, Doug likes you. He's asked me to ask you out. Oh, shit, I said his name, but who cares? No one will know who he is. <laughs> Except in your hometown and all your like, friends from <laughs> Nah, because he wasn't even from my town, so no one will know him. And, and Ilsa, being just an amazing friend, goes, Daryl, no fucking way in hell. Like, if yeah. you, you, I know you liked him, so there's no way I'd go near him. I just, I just wouldn't do that. So, so being a friend is about having that trust and, and, and about doing what's in your friend's interest. Mm-hmm. You know, also protecting yourself. Obviously, yeah. you have to look after yourself first, but it doesn't sound like she has ever had you as her best interest. She has yeah. her own best interest. And that's, yeah, if you keep going back to that friendship, you're just going to get her again, I think. Mm. Not every friendship is meant to last. And I've had several very, very close friendships that have ended because shit just got too toxic or too much drama. or And a lot of it was they started cutting me down in front of other people. I mean, you were there at one <laughs> where a friend of mine cut me down in front of a whole group of people. And well, she said it to me. She gave me some feedback after I'm just going to fucking say it. She said that I did a group meditation and she came up to me and said, oh, that was really fast. You really should slow down and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, well, fucking hell. Thanks a lot. But I also was like, oh, well, maybe there's something in that and. Whatever. But anyways, then she walks across the room in front of all these people and starts telling Daryl that exact thing. Do you remember this? Yeah, of course I you remember. do. remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he just turns her and he said, hmm, that sounds like something you should talk to Caroline about. And she's like, oh, I just did. And you, oh, I just fucking fell in love with you in this moment, Daryl. This is like when we just knew each other and it was the first time we'd ever worked together. And you said, why are you talking to me then? <laughs> and everybody saw it. And I was just like, I wanted to high five you. <laughs> and, and I was fucking done. I was done. I just yeah. thought, fuck you trying to cut me down in front of a whole group of people when I was, you know, first time teaching this course. And I just couldn't even believe it. And it, I don't know. And I'm sure she didn't mean to cut me down. I think she was probably just trying to get validation. I don't, no, I don't did. know what she, she was. She was jealous. And, yeah. you know, it, it just wasn't okay to, you, you don't cut people down in front of other people. You just don't do it. If you've got feedback to give people, you can give it to them privately. There was no, there's no need for it. And I don't think we need to make excuses for, I think if, if somebody, on the other hand, it, in Britain, it's very, very common to make fun of people. That's that's what people do mm. nonstop all the time. They make yeah. fun of you for your differences. It's the it's the same in Argentina. My partner's like always making fun of his friends and they're making fun of him in front of each other and they're all laugh together. It's banter mm. is what they call it. So there's banter on one hand and then there's there's cutting people down and the difference is the tone. And I think that's why you highlighted it in your letter. You, you wanted us to hear the tone and we can't, but mm. I understand what you mean because... If a friend that I used to go out to town with when I was a teenager went to me, ah, oh, Daryl, you're such a slut, she would say it with a laughing tone and I would laugh along because mm. when I knew her, I was a bit slutty. 
<laughs> but <laughs> if I had... Nothing wrong with that. But if somebody went, Darling, you're a slut. Like with a with a downward inflection, if they were yep. if they were accusing me and telling me something in front of people, that's different. That that's not having fun. That's mm. not that's not banter. That's an accusation, and it does sound like your friend was trying to cut you down, mm. rather and rather than having banter. Yeah, I think so. And it's like, what's that saying? Who needs enemies? <laughs> or you know, when you have friends like that, and you shouldn't like. For me, if I really wanted to give a friend a feedback, like that was fine that she came up and said that to me at the time, but I would have waited, not while you're like in the middle of fucking teaching something and it's a quick break. I would have waited till afterwards and said, like you said, you pick that time when it's a good time to say, hey, just so you know, or maybe yeah, whatever the feedback is, but you don't say it in front of everybody else and you don't, it just... For me, I just would never do that. Like, especially if something's kind of a big deal for my friend, even if it's not. Like, you want to support your friends. You want to be their hype man or you want to be their hype yeah. woman or whatever it is. And, like, for me, I have, I've always got my friends back a hundred fucking percent. And if you fuck with one of my friends in front of me, <laughs> it's not going to go well for you. Be careful. It's like, I always want to take you into dangerous situations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can't can will protect me? I, do you know what? I... This isn't book review time, but mm. this love triangle dynamic reminds me of my favorite book that I've read over and over again. It's the first in a, in a trilogy. It's called The Bronze Horseman. Have you read it? That rings a bell by Paula somebody? Paulina Simons or Simmons. It's set, I don't know if in, I've read it actually. It's I'm fucking sure. amazing. It's set in, in Russia in the siege of Leningrad. Mm. So that the city is surrounded by Germans. It's, it's based on obviously real life mm -hmm. and the city's getting starved out they're getting, they're getting starved out there and anyway this basically there's love at first sight come home and the person that she's fallen in love with at first sight with has been dating her sister so i won't tell you what happens next but that is how the book starts and it's a fucking good read it's mm. a brilliant brilliant read it's a uh, paulina simmons bronze horseman give it a go yeah that sounds good i think it's having strong boundaries and not tolerating bad behavior. Like a comment I'll make, because a lot of people go, oh, it's just trying to be funny. You know, they always hear that. Oh, it's just being mm. funny. Relax. You're being too sensitive. I was definitely told I was too sensitive growing up, but it was normally by people who are being fucking sarcastic at my expense. Yeah. And what I say to anyone who's doing that, I go, oh, jokes are meant to be funny. <laughs> I always say that. Yeah, and they go, huh, if it's not fucking funny, then it's not a joke. My one is ask them to repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got it from you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hang on. Or let me get my phone out. And I want to just record that because I don't think anyone is going to believe what a fucking bitch you are. Because that, they wow, realize, that might be a bit aggressive. <laughs> but it, just by asking them to say it again, they really notice when they say it the mm. second time. Because the yeah. timing's off. You're looking right at them. You're paying attention. Then they're not going to get away with it. Mm. And, and it's really stops them in their tracks asking yeah. people to say it again but I, I don't know if I've talked tell me if I've, I've said this before in the podcast but the ABC rankings no I don't think friends. so so um, I don't know where I got this from I read it somewhere or heard it somewhere and I applied it to my life and I recommend it to a lot of my clients yeah. which is rank all of your friends A, B and C so mm. A is the good cunts so this is <laughs> the people that you can trust they trust you you've got a history ride or die yeah ride or die yeah good friends the b's are like in the middle so they're good friends you, you know you can be an a but not keep in touch you don't have to keep in touch unless that's what you want and you yeah. both want that but a b is uh they're good friends but sometimes they let you down sometimes they're not so great and then the c's are the friends that are just not nice they're, they're just not good friends mm. there you have fun together when you go out maybe you get drunk together and maybe that's what you use each other for but they're actually not good people or mm. you don't get on well or they're just not good friends so what you do is you rank all your friends a b and c and you get rid of the c's mm. and if you're listening to this and you used to be my friend and you're wondering why you haven't heard from me in a while <laughs> either you're, you're a, a c next tuesday either you're a c <laughs> or you're an a but i know that we still love each other and we'll pick up where we left off yeah and that's what i prefer most of my friendships to be like to be fair mm. so i don't want to keep having to message you every two minutes. However, so you got ABC. The C's, you get rid of them. Cut them loose. 
you get rid of them. And then the Bs, your job is to convert them into As. So you set boundaries, you teach them, you tell them what you need, you tell them what you want, you train them how to treat you. Mm -hmm. They either follow that and they start treating you like an A and you become A's. And now you've only got A friends because the B becomes an A. If they don't, you cut them loose as well. They've become a C. They've become a C and you get rid of them. After that, you've only got A friends. Only got friends that feed you, that support you, and you support them and you feed them. And really can make a difference to your energy levels and how much you enjoy your life. So to me, she sounds like she was an A to begin with, or at least a B, Mm. but that something happened when you moved away. And when you moved away, either she started shagging Tim or she missed you and she was jealous of your new friendships, but something happened and she started treating you badly. So Mm. There's, you try to train her. So she was a B maybe that you said, right, here's my boundary. Can you not do this? And when you tried to train her, she became a C. Yeah. She didn't become an A. And you can't keep Bs. I'm sorry. You don't have time for them. We've got time for what, six friends in our life? Yeah. Six friends on average. We've got time to service six friendships. You don't have time for her. Mm. No. And if a friend doesn't make you feel good, then they shouldn't be in your life. It's just not okay. And sometimes people are just having a bad day or whatever. I think you can you can give people a pass, but I think you need to call them up on it. And I think mm-hmm. another thing you can say is, are you okay? Is something bothering you? Or have I done something? Like confront it right on. Because our, yeah. our instinct is to withdraw and not say anything or be passive aggressive and shitty. And I'm just noticing you're being a real fucking bitch lately. And maybe don't say it like that. <laughs> but <laughs> things I say in my head and then the things that actually come out of my mouth. But I don't know. They could be pissed off at you about something that they're not actually telling you so they're acting passive aggressive. But a lot of times I think they've just been raised in passive aggressive homes. And so that they had a mother that did that to them. Whenever I've had a friend that's been passive aggressive and then met their family, there's always been that dynamic there. Mm. So I think it is a family pattern. Family. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's how I share love because my mother's a complete fucking bitch to me all the time. And, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But I would just give her a miss. It sounds like you're sending her the best. It's bullshit that she's lying and trying to make you feel bad. But I don't What do they say? If you know, What other people say about you is none of your business. And we want to, like, analyze it and what did I do wrong? But I really don't think you did anything wrong. You were always up front with her. I don't think you even needed to ask her permission, really. But I think when you said you were interested, I would have been like, "Ooh, well, oops, I made out with him last night, so. And remember, it's always <laughs> easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> That's my fucking motto in life, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Grant's always like, you should ask. I'm like, nah. <laughs> like, no, I think you're yeah, obviously not against boundaries, but you know, I don't know. Rules are made to be broken, aren't they? So, but not with friends, not with friends. But I think she didn't really have a right to tell you that you couldn't see him in the first place. She hadn't gone out just because she was interested. You had already hooked up with him. That like, right there, just, sh- I mean, for me, I wouldn't be like, uh, because it'd just be weird if then you started dating him. You yeah, know? it's like too late. Yeah, if she turned around and like went after him, how fucking awkward is that? I mean, obviously that's what she did. And what kind of bullshit did she say to that guy too? And on the other hand, though, she could have been in love with this Tim and, mm-hmm. and, and not said anything. But either way, if other people can't communicate, it's not your problem. Like yeah. You communicated well. And if other yep. people can't communicate with you, that's, that's their issue to work on. I feel sorry for them. However... The person that you're going to be with is going to be someone who's awesome at communicating, someone that's amazing, and someone that's not going to invite you around for a spa until at least the third date, because they're going to want to get to know you for who you are before they spend t- too much time with their face in your fanny. Uh, <laughs> that's great advice. I think I have nothing better to add to that. So I think we have to leave it there. <laughs> and that's the other thing. If you're a woman, look for ones that want to just keep their face in your fanny. Yeah. And, and fanny in New Zealand and the UK is your pussy, not yeah, your that's ass. That's what I mean. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, they could have thought you were talking about eating ass. But anyways, well, I digress. Never take your fancy. <laughs> <laughs> you do you. I don't think you're in the wrong. And I think we outgrow people. And it's part of life. And I don't think you should feel bad about it. It's hurtful when it happens. I've had it happen both ways. (laughs) I've had people dump me too. 
And it's just part of life. And it's just moving on. But like Daryl said, get rid of all the fucking B's and C's. Or, well, get rid of the C's and make the B's the A's if they deserve to be A's. And if not, just fucking stick with A's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for writing in to us. I, I hope that this has been helpful. And please, if you're listening to this, like and subscribe. But also mm-hmm. send us your letters because we would love yeah. to be able to help you and, and give you our I was going to say two cents worth, but our <laughs> 50 cents. Actually, worth. $300 worth is what people pay us <laughs> an hour for this advice. So, hey, fuck, you got basically $600 worth of advice just right now. <laughs> True that. <laughs> that sounds bad. That sounds bad, but I don't know. I think life's too short to hang out with people that are going to make you feel bad. And that's just, that's just that. And there's lots of fucking amazing people in the world. Yeah. So that's us for today. Like and like Daryl said, subscribe and share with your friends and send us letters. And we just appreciate feedback. We love you. We love you. We want to put our faces in your panties. <laughs> or, or your penis. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Daryl definitely does not want to put his face in your fanny, just so no, you know. I am no. a gay. <laughs> if I, a gay. If I want to make Daryl wretch, I talk about no. wet, no. slimy vaginas. Slimy. No. <laughs> 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 okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>